One. You guys having a good show? Yeah. All right. Now, Eric, you're going to be filming the whole time? Yeah. The thing you've got to watch it. Everybody, um, if you've never been to a Para USA um, show here, my name is Todd Jarrett, and I am a professional pistol shooter. That's what they pay me for anyway. Sometimes I make a few mistakes and miss a few targets. Because shooting a handgun is the most difficult for all the firearms to master uh, versus a shotgun or shooting a um, shooting a rifle because you've got different points of contact there. So when, um, when I go to the range and I start practicing, start shooting bullets um, in 1983, one thing led to another. I, I've shot um, about 2.2 million rounds over the years with a handgun alone. And uh, currently I shoot a better shot you need to have a lighter trigger on the gun. That's why the 1911 style pistol is the most, you know, recognized gun in the world today, is that it's pretty much uh, survived 100 years. And I can't believe that it's still winning matches, uh, still being used by law enforcement in the civilian world because of its ergonomics and how it works, all the features that you can put on it, there's nothing like it. It's going to be 100 years old, 2011. It's going to be 100 years old, so look out for some new models that are coming out. I love that knife right there, okay? I'm going to put it right on my, I'm putting it right there, okay? There's a trick, is it? You guys already see that. It's um, a laser light over there. They, I actually got in my pocket. I was just talking to him earlier, I was going like, so all my rail guns are going like, uh, you know, this thing fits right on the rail gun. I mean, is that the coolest looking thing you ever want to see like? I'm going to buy like a hundred of these things and sell them. So, um, you guys, um, go by and check out in um, um, Laser Light, they're over there. They got them over there. I think they're like 49 bucks, 49 retail, something like that. Okay, 59, they're 59, yeah, 59. 10 bucks goes to me. Okay. <laughs> Press the shot, okay, I want to use the center of the nail area. So if I'm using the center of the nail area, most of us want to use that, put our finger in the first joint. By putting our finger in the first joint, we have a tendency to influence the gun as a right-handed shooter shooting at 7 o'clock or a left-hand shooter shooting at 5 o'clock. We're not in time is what it is. The sights, so when I'm on a range and I'm shooting, I'm going to press the shot. So if you guys just turn around this back wall back there, some of you might be able to see, so you see my laser there. What I want to do here is, there's a little light there. So what happens is I can tell and talk to an individual to see how steady he can control his breathing while breaking the hammer on that target back there. So if I have a two inch target back there, then my front sight, so when I drop the hammer on there, what it does, it tells me exactly what I'm doing with the gun. Now I can, if I do everything right, I probably can hold a little steadier. But if you can hold the sight that steady, you should feel the gun will do that at 50 yards away. Okay? So you have to understand breathing, trigger control, overall stance, all that's very important. But it tells you what you're influencing. The problem is, if you're using iron sights, my sights are a foot wide at that distance. So with it being a foot wide, my accuracy is only as good as the width of the front sight. So if my front sight is six inches wide, I could have a bullet land here, I could have one land there. It may possibly land right in the dead center. So the problem is they're not detailed enough, and now I'm trying to concentrate on the back sight and the front sight and cover all this up and, and then look at the target. Whenever you can look at the target, take a sighting device and put it on that object, you're always going to be more accurate. Okay? right there and I fire the shot and the gun lifts and fire, and it ends up right there for fall through, that's where the bullet went. Wherever the bullet went, that's where the sight was when you fired the shot. So what happens is it really shows you great detail in your overall skill level. There's no other device out there on the market that can do that. So if you're interested in getting your skill levels up a little bit, they think about lasers out there because I think they are an excellent tool, in my opinion, for going out there and uh, becoming a better shot. Now, of course, if we go out to the range, we, we start talking about trigger control and how that works while it goes. Now we want to talk about the grip. The grip is a 45 degree angle. Most of us have a tendency to feel, and they, they say, oh, this feels really good. They're healing. I'm putting too much pressure on the pistol at the bottom. By doing this, as a gun fires, you're actually bending the wrist. What we're doing is, in competition, we're rotating that up around so that locks now, so when the gun fires, it bends at the elbows. By bending the elbows, the gun returns to the same spot, and you don't influence the gun as hard as you would if you were trying to 
press the trigger correctly. So making your support hand go out there. You also want them to make sure that you hold the gun as tightly as possible. I tell everybody, you go out to the range, he said, hey, once you saw this guy tied, Jared, he said, hold the gun really tight and I'll become a better shot. So if I hold the gun really, really tight, I'm not doing very well. If the front side shake and you're holding it too tight. You need to increase your overall grip strength by about 20%. What I mean by 20 feet at a high rate of speed, I'm going to hold the gun very tightly in my hand. So I want to make sure those elbows slightly bend. Fully extend all the way out there, bring them back a half inch. So you want to use them as shock absorbers so that gun will return back in to the target each and every time. Now, what you can do the gun. Not a clip, a magazine, okay? Don't follow Hollywood, okay? Jack Bauer, he's a, he's a good at killing terrorists, but he don't know how to explain about a gun, okay? So, when I tell everybody is that when I want to move my head, I only want to move what's necessary in order to draw the gun up and out to the target. So when the gun starts off, I'm going to pop that shot off there. Look at the target, and about 18 yards away, I can grab the gun and put, put that shot on there. Here we go. It's a .80, and we talk about uh, we got to be everything just right here. Here we go. Oh, that was easy. Here we go. Sixty-one and a half. Okay. Here we go. Two-second drill. So two seconds from shot to shot. Most people have a hard time doing that and with, with one bullet, okay? So, but it does take a lot of practice. But if you notice what I'm trying to accomplish here is that I'm going to be looking at the target. So once I shoot the shot, look what I do. I bring my eyes right back to the bottom of the mag well to make sure that the magazine goes in properly. So it only takes a split second in order for us to do that. So here's a 1.60. You guys figure out the draw and the reload, okay? But this can be done with live ammunition. Okay, this is about my normal, my normal in the range. Okay, that was about a 150 there, probably. So, thanks, Takes a lot of practice to do that, but um, I tell everybody, uh, I was asked to go to front of Congress one year when they talked about the about the 10-round band. So I was going to take 10 magazines, okay? So,